Greetings from Professor Sumi at California University of Pennsylvania. This video explores the use of National Instruments MultiSIM in the application of digital logic circuits. Although MultiSIM is a general purpose schematic capture and circuit simulation software package, it also is particularly well suited to working with logic circuits. For an example in this video, we'll be looking at implementing a two input logic AND gate, as shown here with its conventional symbol. Also, we see the truth table for the two in AND gate. And as a refresher, uh, the operation of the AND gate produces a logic high only when all of the inputs are high. If any of the inputs are in a low state, the output will be low. So to get started, let's switch back to our schematic page and start looking for some components. So going into the Place Component dialog, we would normally tap into the TTL and CMOS categories for most of our logic functions. For example, 74LS would have uh, your typical 7400, for example, which is a quad two input NAND gate, giving us, again, four, uh, then that's the name quad, four of these packages in a single integrated circuit. For this video, it turns out that the miscellaneous digital group provides a family called TIL that happens to be just very simple logic elements without uh, worrying about the particular IC packaging. So for example, we see a two input AND gate, a three input, four input, all the way up to an eight input. We see buffers and counters and D latches. Uh, half adder, multiplexers, NAND gates, NOR gates, there's our inverter, the NOT logic gate, 2 input OR, 5 input OR, 8 input OR, uh, ending up with exclusive NORs and exclusive ORs. So again, this particular category is very handy if all you're interested in is getting a couple logic gates up on your circuit and implementing functionality very quickly. So let's get our two input AND gate shown here. We'll drop it on the schematic right there in the middle. Let's also get some power sources under the power sources category. We could apply a battery to the circuit, but instead we're going to be using a VCC, which is a fixed five volt reference that you would normally find on a benchtop power supply. We also need a ground, so I'll choose a conventional ground, drop it in down here. And we also need a switch, which would be in the basic category. For this particular circuit, I want to use a single pole double throw switch so that I can apply either a logic high or a logic low to each input of the AND gate. So I'll drop one of those right there. All right, let's make a little more room here. The first thing I want to do is I want to horizontally flip this switch so I can face the inputs to the VCC and ground. The output will go to the AND gate. And the next thing we'll do is right click it, copy it, and then I will paste a copy of that. That's an alternative way to get another component on your circuit. All right, so let's go ahead and wire the switch one to the top input of the AND gate. I'm going to move this wire right here over to the right a little bit. And let's drop a couple of text annotations so that we can refer to this input as A and this lower input as B. So there we have A and B. Let's also put a F output over here where the output of the AND gate is generated. All right, next up, let's go ahead and wire five volts to the top legs of each switch. And let's wire ground to the bottom legs of each switch. Currently, both switches use the spacebar to toggle them. 
that would be a little awkward. It switches both at the same time. So let me click on switch one and switch the toggle key to A. And for switch two, properties, change the key to B. So now we have A and B to work the switches. That's great. All right, so we can see what is happening here when we run the circuit. We need some type of an indicator on the output. So one way to do that is to go to the indicator group and locate a probe. So for a long time, many versions of multi-SIM had this particular family, this family of probes. And what these really are uh, is nothing more than an LED that happens to assume the ground connection internally. So it only has a single input. When you drop it on your schematic and wire it in, it will indicate high for a logic one and off for a logic zero. All right, at this point, we should be able to run our simulation. So let's go ahead and click run. And as we can see, the two low logic inputs on A and B cause the AND gate to produce a logic low or off on the output. So let's raise A high. I'll hit the A key. Still no LED. If I return A to low and raise B to a high, still no LED. The only way we can get an LED active is if both A and B are high. So the LED is on. Now let me return the inputs to a low. To explore another very useful feature in more recent versions of multi-SIM, on the place menu there also is a probe menu item where you can choose a voltage, current, power probe, and a few other ones including digital. A digital probe is just that. This is a indicator of sorts where I can bring in and place on a signal somewhere in my circuit. So what I want to do is monitor the input A and input B for the AND gate as it's operating. The probe toolbar is also a shortcut to the place probe menu. So the digital probe is located over here. I'm going to, going to get a second one, bring it down here and put on the B input. And let me move the notation box out of the way. And right now you can see that they're indicating a pulse. It's a digital probe that doesn't know what the logic level is just yet. So let's go ahead and start our simulation. And you will immediately see that because both switches are closed to ground right now, they're indicating a logic zero. And as I operate each switch, for example, switch one, we see this goes to a one. And down here, if I operate switch B, that goes to a 1, again producing a logic high on the output. So the digital probes are an extremely useful tool in a digital circuit to troubleshoot and analyze what's going on in the circuit. All right, stop the simulation again, and let me remove the digital probes. And slide this over a little bit to bring in a logic converter. So over on the instruments menu, Multisim provides a logic converter instrument that we can bring into our circuit and place wherever we like. Now, the way the logic converter works is it provides nine input taps. The leftmost eight are signals that exist in your circuit that would have some impact or effect on the ninth one. So the intent of the ninth input is to connect to a circuit output, and then this converter will actually analyze our circuit. So to demonstrate this, let me connect the first input to A, the second input to B. I don't need the rest of these, so I'll go all the way to the final input and tell the logic converter that this is what my logic circuit is producing. Now, if we double click on the logic converter, it opens up a specific dialog window for the logic converter. And it provides us with about six buttons over here for doing different types of conversions. Watch this. Without even running a simulation of the circuit, 
if I click the first button, which suggests that we can convert from a circuit to a truth table, a short pause, and the logic converter will analyze our circuit, determine that with the two inputs active, there are four possibilities from binary 00, zero to 11, one, and it's recorded that the output of our circuit produces 0001. Zero, zero, so again, just by clicking this button, Logic Converter analyzes our circuit and produces a truth table directly from it. Some of the other capabilities of the Logic Converter that we may look into at a later time would be converting from a truth table to a equation, from a truth table to a simplified equation, from a Boolean equation to a truth table, from a Boolean equation to a circuit, and from a Boolean equation to a circuit comprised only of logic NAND gates. The lower box down here is the entry area for a Boolean equation. Perhaps we can explore that in a future video. So to summarize, this short video explored the use of multi-SIM for logic functions, and we demonstrated wiring a two-input AND gate through some switches to fixed logic highs and lows respectively, using probes to indicate the output, using digital probes to monitor a signal sort of real time in the circuit, and finally using the logic converter to do at least one of the functions. It would be very easy to take this circuit as is. If I right click on the AND gate, I have an option to replace component and I could switch this, for example, to a two input OR gate by clicking OK. And now the circuit is reconfigured to experiment with an OR gate. That concludes this video.